just want to welcome you guys this evening. It's good to be with you guys. If I've not met you before, I'm Brian Fenimore, the founder of Plumline. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the reason we meet on Friday nights and do this is we want to spend time with the Lord and have the Lord meet us at every level. Worship, His Word, and His presence. So for the people that have been here before, um, I'm going to encourage you right now. I'm going to uh, begin to do something in the Word, but I want you to put your heart before the Lord and ask Him if He has anything so that when we move to the next section of ministering in the presence of the Lord, God will give you words of knowledge or any of those things. So if you've never done that before, why don't you join me? I'm going to pray a real quick prayer, and then we're going to get into the Word. Father, we just uh, set our heart before you to not only receive what your Word says, but to receive your presence, your power, and your love. Show us what you want us to do moving forward. And however you want to meet each person here this evening, just release your presence and your power and your love to do that. Give us your gifts, which is you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right, if you guys have your Bibles in whatever form you have them in, would you go with me to John chapter 1, verse 5. John chapter 1, verse 5. And as you're turning there, I have been, um, just probably like you guys, uh, as we've gone through the last couple of years, we've been asking a really serious question about what does it mean to be an overcomer? Uh, all the different things that we've all had to face. Uh, there are different trials that all of us have it, that we go through our lives, and this idea of being an overcomer becomes a very important theme. In fact, um, Jesus begins to have a dialogue with the disciples in what we'd actually call the hardest points of their lives and talks to him about what it means to overcome. Now, why is this so important as we're covering this this evening? Because God has determined that no matter what you and I face in this world with fallenness and death and all the things that we endure, he actually says that his life, his word, and his presence gives us the ability to overcome. And so it's not just a statement, it's not just something we say and it's really difficult, it's actually the life of God in us helps us overcome. And so there's a lot of ways the Bible talks about being an overcomer. Uh, the one we're going to look at here in John chapter 1 verse 5 is it's going to make a statement of overcoming and it's going to use this concept called the light. So it says this in John 1 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not comprehend it. Some translations have over, uh, the darkness cannot overcome it. And what we want to do is we want to talk about this. What it is going to begin to do is it's going to tell us that because of the life of God, it is now going to use the illustration of light as the life of God. And the way the word light is used in the original language, I'm sure you guys see this all the time, it's either talking about a physical thing or it's using a symbolic term, and then it talks about different ways that light does what it does. So even when we get into this passage, you'll see that, see that it'll say that he is light, and what it means is he is the source of all life. But when we come into this passage right here, it says the light shines in the darkness. Thank you, John. And the darkness does not overcome it or comprehend it. So let's begin the process here. The word light. Here in the original language, it's phos, where this is where we get photo or fo a photograph, phos, and it means light, but what's really interesting, especially right here in 1 John 5, 3, it's not talking about like if you and I look at the light, so there's a light. It's actually talking about there is a light, but what emanates from it is brightness. Now what's interesting here is it says the light shines in the darkness. And so here it's talking about the manifestation of God giving, ready, his self-existent life, divine illumination to reveal Christ to us. So he's obviously Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, but he emanates grace. And this is the idea of light. It, it actually has an ability to be received, and that's what it's starting to say here. So the light shines, and when it uses that word shine, it actually means to appear, to be recognized, or to be seen. And so it's saying the light shines in the darkness. 
This is not talking about a physical light. It is talking about a spiritual reality. Christ has the ability to shine himself forth to people so that they can actually recognize it, receive it, and cooperate with it. So we would say this. It's kind of an intense uh, phrase to say, but you're already an overcomer because Christ has revealed himself to you, if you know him. Now, what that means is the very life that God gives you means he is the overcomer one. And when he draws near you and makes himself known to you, he is shining the light of grace to you to begin to step into that as a lifestyle. Now, let's see if I could say this really well. That means that every situation that you and I go through in life, God has determined that he is going to overcome that with you. In fact, uh, it talks about the different things that you and I go through as these are things not just to endure but to overcome. And then it says, and not only will we overcome, we will overcome because of our faith. So every enemy you and I have to face death, destruction, disease, all of it, Christ is determined that ultimately we will overcome it, and it's going to begin to describe it here in this passage. So this is not making a statement of fact. It is making a statement of what God does towards you. God shines, and this is a consistent verb tense in the original language, which means he doesn't shine once to reveal himself to you. The minute he begins to shine his reality that he is Lord and that he is overcoming, the word shine means it starts and it continues on to a final journey. It doesn't stop and start. It's a continual shining. So what does it do when it says it? It says it shines in the darkness. Now, this is interesting. Again, uh, when, when this word darkness is used, when I started, I, I'm, I know you guys do this stuff too. When you have nothing better to do, you find a word in the, in the Bible and you say, I think I'll go study what the Greek says about that. And then you spend five hours, right? Looking at every tense. Right, Dominic? That's what you do, right? And so when I was looking at this word darkness, I just thought it meant evil or some of those things. But there are some really intense words that are used in the original language for the word darkness. Interesting enough, this word for darkness doesn't just mean moral. Uh, it, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean evil, which is interesting. It means a brand of moral and spiritual obscurity. So now what it's actually saying is this darkness blocks the light of God. The word darkness means it blocks the light of God where faith is lacking. So it means that anywhere there's darkness, the Bible isn't using it by saying there's evil, at least in this passage. It's saying the darkness is like a block in the heart that cannot receive faith. So what is this trying to say? What's the opposite of this? It's saying when God is bringing his presence in your life, what is it stirring inside your soul every time it radiates into you? It's stirring faith. It's stirring overcoming. Now, later on in other passages, I think we've looked at it here, it says, what has overcome the world? Our faith. And so now it's using the idea, well, how does that overcome the world? God emanates his presence and his grace inside of you, and it's to break up moral and spiritual obscurity. That is what is in the block of people's hearts and minds that cause them not to walk in biblical faith. Now, isn't that amazing? So it would be like this. If we, were, if we turned off all the lights in this room right now, and then I hit the switch on, it would emanate light, and until the switch went off, it would all it would be doing is shining and getting rid of darkness in the room. Well, that's the idea that the passage is saying here now. In him is life, and he is the light of all men. It is now saying the minute Christ engages you in salvation, it's like a light's been turned on, and it stays perpetually on until it dispels all form of darkness, and you reach the final journey of why God showed himself to you, which is to take you to the new heaven and the new earth and live in a whole new reality of the kingdom of God. So God is now forming you to get used to his presence being in you and you living as an overcomer. Now, how many of you have gone through situations in life where you think, I don't know if that's true. I feel more overcome than I do as an overcomer. 
And what's interesting about this idea, and we're going to look at it in this passage, is it's now trying to work on the idea of why are we overcome? What is causing us to be overcome? Especially what we're going to see here in the passage. So keep looking at it with me. And it says, and the darkness does not comprehend it. Now, that's kind of interesting translation. Some, uh, like I said, some translations say the darkness does not overcome it or challenge it. And it's interesting, uh, this translation, the NASB says comprehend it. And this word comprehend, um, it's that idea. It's not the darkness is stupid and it doesn't understand the light. It's not that kind of idea of comprehend. It's more of an idea of this. Let's see if I can break this down. The original word for comprehend or, or um, conquer it means to hold something down by force in a manner where it cannot uh, win. And so when it says the darkness cannot overcome it, it actually means the power of the life of Christ that is being emanated to you and I the darkness does not have the ability, it's actually not even in the category of the power to overcome it. So this is actually telling you and I, why do we, why do we say that we are overcomers? Because God is actually saying this level of darkness doesn't even have the power to overcome the effect of the life the light of Christ that's coming towards you. It's on and it's going towards a goal inside your heart and your mind. And it actually means that anything that you and I are facing, God has determined before it has happened that he is going to be victorious and cause you to be an overcomer in that situation. Let me take an example here. So when you read scripture like I do, do you guys ever read like the Old Testament, like Elijah and some of the people? And these guys are having to face the whole entire nation being in rebellion to God, worshiping false gods, and God, God's people literally being chased by the leaders of Israel, and, God, and they're killing the prophets of God and stuff. And then you have people like Elijah showing up on the scene, right? And so Elijah doesn't have to just face his countrymen. He has to face his political leaders who are actually uh, in rebellion. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, Ahab and Jezebel were setting up high places for a Baal worship to take over the whole nation of Israel. So here's God's people. Now they're worshiping false gods and they're raising up places of worship to take the whole nation into rebellion. And here God sends Elijah into the middle of all that. Now that seems like a pretty big odd, doesn't it? But with God in the middle of it, it begins to talk about, now isn't this funny? It, the first thing it does is it points to his prayer life and it says, okay, Look at his prayer life. Now, look at everything that he had to face and look at his prayer life. And God had determined that he was going to use one guy to change the course of a whole nation. And he's trying to show, now see how significant when God is involved in your life, how everything could be against you in the natural. And yet when he's in the middle of it, he plans on a victory coming on the other end of it. And so he's pointing at just the prayer life of Elijah and you guys uh, have recognized that. And in James chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, there, James is actually doing a commentary on the prayer life of Elijah. And he says, now look, Elijah was like you and I, but he prayed effective prayer. Now, when I, when I was looking at that word, that helps with the idea here of being an overcomer. What is effective prayer or prevailing prayer? Well, the original language, effective prayer means, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, it means that God's presence comes on an individual, and the way that it's described that God's presence comes is he actually gives you what's called a warrior anointing, and the anointing means that all of a sudden a tenacity of God comes inside of you, and he gives it intentionally to you so that whatever you have to face, you have a perspective that I'm in this and I'm going to win because the way the original language says that in the Greek, it's not only a warrior spirit, it's the power to stand in the midst of a hurricane and face it and overcome it. Now that's interesting, isn't it? And that points to what we're looking at in the passage. It's actually saying that God puts us in the, uh, I, I don't know if you guys are going to like this. I think I'll duck right after I say this. 
But God has determined that believers are going to be in situations where it's so difficult that only the presence of God on you is going to get you through something. And what's amazing is he actually gets you, gives you a warrior anointing to overcome something that someone in the natural has no ability to do. And it changes you from the inside out. So are you guys ready? How many of you ever have this uh, experience where everything's going wrong and then the Lord shares something with you and you know you've overcome it before you see anything changed in the natural? This is the hope that you and I have been given in Christ that he who begins again work in you is going to see it to completion. And by the way, just so we can get to the point of this, the idea isn't just to get through it. Oh, wow, I just got through that. Whew, I hope that never happens again. I lost a lot of weight and my hair fell out. That's not the idea. It's not like I just made it through. The way that God's presence works in our life is when God is working through us and he is shining his light, he doesn't just say you're going to get through it. I'm going to give you ability to actually rise above it. And when you get out on the other end, whatever battle you had to go through, you're actually conquered the battle through Christ shining in you. And now you don't have to ever face that battle again because you're totally victorious over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's see if I could start this. When you look at the life of David, didn't he have to start with bears and lions and then face Goliath? So you see every time in David's life he's having to do harder challenges, and you think, well, why doesn't that overcome him? Because of the light of Christ being shined in his heart, he now realizes, I'm being made to be an overcomer. So you guys ready? In God's economy, overcoming means it's a step up to a bigger battle. Now, does anyone want to say hallelujah to that? Or, and everyone says, well, I don't want to do that. But Christ actually believes that because of him being in you, you can do that. So any battle he takes you into, what would destroy you in the natural, you now are being given the opportunity to constantly overcome. Now, hopefully you can, guys can go here with me. What crown am I going to take and throw at the feet of Jesus when I stand before him? It's not the, the position that he's given me in Christ. It's the victories that he's given me in Christ. And so when he's overcoming, he's placing a crown of nobility back on you and I and saying, of course you're a king and a conqueror. You have learned that through me loving you through every situation. And that's what you're going to throw at his feet. You're going to go, I could not have done it without you in the midst of me. And that's the light shining in the darkness. So where are we at, you and I, tonight? Have you guys noticed? The darkness is trying to communicate to you and I right now, it's going to overcome us. And it's, it's starting an assault of lying to us, and it's trying to get us to give up before we even face what we're pulled into. So each one of us in this room are facing some form of, of obscurity, darkness, and giving up on the hope of God. And God is trying to call you and I to let him just shine the light of his presence to transform us into that place where we overcome. Do you guys recognize that? Would you pray with me just for a moment? Holy Spirit, just release your power right now. Okay, now we've come before you this evening, Lord, to just ask that the light of your presence would search us. So search us, O oh Lord. Bring your power. And anywhere where we need confidence and hope, for the battle we're in the midst of right now, I ask the light of your glory would just settle in on us and that you would speak to us. Just let it come, Lord.
We thank you for your peace, light of your presence, your love, and your glory. Now breathe on us, Lord. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask that from this night, this night forward, Lord, the Spirit would give us wisdom and revelation that we can know the hope of our calling in you. Now release it, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.